Cthulhu mythos in games. Much like the world of cinema, gaming has had a tricky history with the Cthulhu mythos. While most mythos stories are filled with mystery and slow-building horror, games are very often based on the impetus of action. That being said, I think gaming has a better chance of replicating the appeal of Lovecraft stories than films do. Much like the previous episode, we will not cover every game based on the mythos, but it should serve as a solid overview. Perhaps the first notable game release based on the mythos is the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, first released in 1981 by Chaosium. Departing from the heroic action of games such as Dungeons and Dragons, or Villains and Vigilantes, Call of Cthulhu encouraged players to slowly unravel a mystery through various clues, generally in a somewhat familiar setting of the 1920s. Some Call of Cthulhu adventures would veer more towards Indiana Jones than some of Lovecraft's work, but the game was filled and expanded with numerous creatures, deities, spells, and tomes from and inspired by the mythos. The game is still going strong today, having recently released a 7th edition. Chaosium also published one of the first mythos board games, Arkham Horror, in 1987. The game takes place primarily within Lovecraft's fictional town of Arkham, although characters will occasionally travel to other locations such as Earlie and the Dreamlands. The players would be tasked with dealing with monsters coming through various gates around Arkham, hopefully closing the gates and preventing the old ones from taking over the world. The game was redone in 2005 by Fantasy Flight Games, who also put out Eldritch Horror in 2013, a similar game to Arkham Horror, but taking place across the globe. One of the first video games to be heavily inspired by the mythos was Infogram's Shadow of the Comet, released in 1993. The plot concerns a British photographer in 1910, who hears the story of a man who went insane upon trying to observe Halley's Comet as it passed above the fictional town of Illsmith, a clear reference to Innsmouth. After arriving in Illsmith, the photographer finds that there's much more going on than just a comet passing by. The story is very much Lovecraftian in nature, as a player slowly unravels the mystery and horror lurking behind the quaint coastal town. The game features direct references to the Necronomicon, Cthulhu, and Yogg-Sothoth. A follow-up game, Prisoner of Ice, released in 1995, was based partially on At the Mountains of Madness. Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth is perhaps the most well-known video game based on the mythos, and was first released for the Xbox in 2005, followed by a PC release in 2006. A first-person shooter, the game also involves various puzzles and stealth sections, as well as some concepts of survival horror. The story of the game takes certain plot elements from Lovecraft's The Shadow Over Innsmouth, as well as Shadow Out of Time, while expanding upon them to accommodate a more action-oriented story. Entities featured in the game include Deep Ones, Yithians, Flying Polyps, a Shogoth, as well as Dagon and Hydra. In 2006, Frogwares, mostly known for their series of Sherlock Holmes adventure games, released Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. Combining the detective genre of Sherlock Holmes with the Cthulhu mythos, the plot of the game revolved around Sherlock and Watson on the case of a secretive cult determined to assist Cthulhu in returning to the surface. A somewhat grimmer title, it was the first Sherlock Holmes game to receive an M rating in the US, but it was very well received. Frogwares have since announced a standalone open world investigation game based on the mythos titled The Sinking City. There is no release date planned, but it looks promising. Cyanide Studio is also planning on releasing a Call of Cthulhu game in 2017, although this one appears to be more in the style of Dark Corners of the Earth, with hopefully less shooting. The list of games that have been inspired by Lovecraft and the Cthulhu Mythos could be exhaustive, but I'll mention a few. Eternal Darkness, released by Silicon Knights in 2002 for the GameCube, is very similar in tone and concept to the Mythos, featuring eldritch tomes and ancient beings that some wish to return to the world. Bloodborne, released in 2015 for the PS4, is heavily inspired by Lovecraft's works and ideas, as well as gothic horror and Victorian architecture. Various great ones are referenced and featured throughout the game, including one visually similar to Cthulhu. Much of the later plot of the game involves the potential return of the Mood Presence, a mysterious great one associated with the moon. There also are certain female characters that become suddenly impregnated with an alien spawn, much like the plot of the Dunwich Horror. 
Darkest Dungeon is a dungeon crawling game released in 2016 for the PC, and heavily involves the grim and oppressive tone that occasionally features in Mythos stories. A manor and the lands around it have become infested with darkness and eldritch horrors, and the player is tasked with sending crews of adventurers downwards through the dungeons and surrounding areas to cleanse the area. Characters can both be killed in horrible fashions, as well as slowly driven insane by their encounters. While there aren't any direct mythos references, a character in the later part of the game refers to himself as an avatar of the crawling chaos. While the history of the mythos in gaming has similarities to that of film, the future of mythos games looks brighter. With two mainstream games based on the mythos in development at the same time, as well as the massive amount of board and card games based on Lovecraft's works, it looks like developers realize the growing popularity of the Cthulhu mythos. And who knows, with the growing trend of virtual reality, maybe it won't be too long until you're staring down a Shogoth yourself. <laughs>